So as you might have guessed, this video is about doing some basic animations in Unreal Engine and turning our still shots into video. And here we're just going to animate a basic camera, but these principles can apply to a lot of different things in your scene. We're going to use the level sequencer and eventually we'll get to showing how to actually render the animation using the movie render queue. Now this is just a preview from a larger Unreal Engine 5 project and course. So if you're a little bit lost and confused about what's going on, then make sure to check out the links below and get the full course. It's only like 10 bucks if you use the YouTube discount. So let's get right into using the level sequencer to make some basic animation. Oh, and make sure to subscribe so that you can get any other previews that I release here from this course or any of my other various courses, or if you just want to stay up to date with all the latest technologies in ArcViz and 3D graphics, all things ArcViz, subscribe here. Okay, so how do we render this? That's the next big thing. And I was going to change over to the to my finished file for this, but actually I'm just going to stay right here, I think. And we can look at the finished file for, for other purposes in a little bit. But right now I want to keep it continuous and we'll just render something straight out of here because we set up this camera that I kind of like. Okay, the scene could be more finished and things, but that's going to be up to each individual student, how they want to finish out the scene. I'm going to show you the techniques to render it once you have it all finished. So to do that, we need to add a level sequence to our scene. And we can do that right here. We'll just call it finished camera, save. This is a sequencer. So this is where we can set keyframes for our overall scene. Okay, to do that, we need to add a track and we'll add a track of the camera. So if you go actor to sequencer, you can find cine cinema camera actor two. That brings it in. There's no animation yet. You can change the overall length here. So 165, we'll run it at 29 frames a second. So maybe we want it a little longer. Can actually stretch this out here too. But still, there's nothing going on here. However, we can set keyframes for everything about our camera, as you can see right here on our track. And this is not new stuff, probably. I mean, this has been around forever. And we've seen how to do it before in previous projects with animating. But this is a review. There's a few things different now, and we'll look at those. So the main things I want to do here is transforms and location, the Z axis. So first over here, when the slider's here, we're going to set it to Z axis and we'll add a keyframe right there. Then as we go over to here, we will change this. To about right there, we'll say. Now we have an animation. If we hit play, we'll see the speed and everything. It's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like is how wide angle it is, but I do like how it's framed in by these trees. So what I could do is zoom in and then move these trees. It's all real time. I mean, I can move this in real time, right? Well, that one's part of the foliage, so I'd have to go into foliage and do it. But you can move it in real time and really compose your shot exactly how you want. That is what is awesome about Unreal Engine. Okay, the fact that you can compose a shot in real time like that is so sweet. But there's our shot. And the only other thing we might do is play with the depth of field. So maybe starting right about here, we could go to the to the depth of field, current aperture, manual focus distance. Okay, so if we set the focus distance here, and then over here, we set the focus distance onto the trees. See, we're not going to get enough aperture. The difference between focusing here and on the trees is almost unnoticeable. Yeah, actually, let's try this. Let's delete those and set the focal distance. When we get to here, we want it to be on the cabin, right? But over here, we could set it on the shrubs. So the cabin comes into focus as we're going. It's very subtle, obviously. Maybe we could move that a little further so you notice it.
Okay, the only other thing I might do is change the easing on these things. So you could right click on it and say you want it to be a linear interpretation mode, right? Or interpolation mode. Right now it's cubic. Okay, so if you've done any animating in After Effects or 3ds Max, you know that this is kind of easing in and easing out, right? It starts slowly and then speeds up a little bit. And then it slowly eases out as it gets to this. That's kind of the default. And that's good because that's how cameras would typically move if you're filming a movie or something. And that's kind of what we're wanting to go for. You could also make it linear so that the speed is constant throughout. Okay, but there you go, that's the basic. And now the only other thing we need to do is set up a movie sequencer. We can go here and say, render this movie to a video or image frame sequence. That will bring up the movie render queue. We can go into unsaved config and in here we can set up the configuration for what we wanna do. And basically that's setting up our output so output resolutions 1920 by 1080 that's not going to be right because we can go to custom frame rate set it to 29.97 or whatever you want but i've seen people say like oh don't set it to 60 or whatever because that looks fakeish that looks video gameish and if you want it to look like a movie then you set it more to what they use to what the frame rate they use for movies and you will be able to see the difference between those two things one looks a little too smooth and is not used to is not what we're used to seeing in a movie um here we would set we would change our resolution to match our resolution here which we would have to look up i set it kind of arbitrarily didn't i it's in the film back settings We'll say 14 by 20. So here we could say output resolution is 2000 by 1400. Hopefully my math is right. Everything's working, I hope. No, it's gonna be 1400 wide by 2000 high. I think that's right. We're going to frame 280, 0 to 285 here. So we'll say 285. Great, everything looks good here. And I always forget something. Now I can also go to anti-aliasing and add, so you can add any settings you want here. Okay, I can add anti-aliasing. I can override the, the anti-aliasing that's there and put something higher here. These multiply times each other, so this is this is 30. Let's look at the documentation real quick to see what settings we want for anti-aliasing. Okay, you can see that like anti-aliasing is going to take is going to be important for making our our scenes look good, especially on stuff that is. I'd say it's probably like opacity map stuff close to the camera that you want to do depth of field on. That's where anti-aliasing will really come in handy. But it just in general smooths out jaggy edges, right? That's not very much documentation. Movie sequencer anti-aliasing. Okay. In the movie in the movie sequencer documentation, then we have anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing controls the number of samples used to produce a final frame. So, like I was saying, spatial and temporal will multiply times each other. So, if you put 2 and 15, then it'll do 30 samples. Temporal sampling takes the time the camera shutter is open, based on the motion blur mount setting, and slices the frame into corresponding time slices. So, if you have motion blur, this is going to be important. Because the engine is ticked, and by extension, time passes in the world, these are called temporal samples. So, for things to blur nicely as you move across the camera, you need a lot of temporal samples. Spatial sample takes each sample that is going to be rendered and renders it multiple times, each time jittering the camera a little bit. This is useful for renders where you have a very short motion blur duration and still need more samples to increase anti-aliasing or reduce noise. 
Okay, so spatial sampling is probably what we want more of here because motion blur isn't going to be the most important thing about this rendering, right? And of course, this will up your render times quite a bit. So temporal count will say, yeah, it's like this. So this is this is like anti-aliasing that doesn't have to do with time passing, and this is anti-aliasing that does have to do with time passing, so basically motion blur. So we'll set this to like eight and two. So we're getting 16 samples per frame. So each frame is going to take way longer now, but it'll look way more smooth and clear and, and well, anti-aliased. You can render warm-up frames so that the, the engine is fully ready when it starts rendering the first frame. Okay, in general, and then you can also save your presets here. Save as preset. We'll say Cine camera to render preset. Okay, that just saves a preset in your content browser down there. And then you can hit accept. Make sure everything's right. Oh, we need to look on our JPEG sequence. No, on output. And we need to make sure that our sequence is going to the right place, right? I think everything's right. This will uh, this will default to your project folder under saved and movie renders. File name format. So this is going to I want it to go to JPEG. Oh, it's going to JPEG sequence 8 bit already. That's that's how it's going to be spit out. Okay, I think everything's good. Our location's good. We want a JPEG sequence. Uh the resolution I think is correct. Let's hit accept. Our anti-aliasing is good. Render. Okay, it'll bring this up and it'll say total frames. It's on negative 1 out of 285. That's on 0. Subsamples 0 of 16, so that's our anti-aliasing, right? And we're on frame 4 of 285 right now. And it should be generating these and putting them into our project folder under saved movie sequences. And in there, you will see a JPEG sequence. Saved. Movie renders. Boom, here's our frames being generated. My computer's screaming at me because of all the things it's doing right now. It's rendering that real-time thing, which takes up a lot of juice. And now I'm trying to open Photoshop. Great. Okay, there's the first frame. You can see that our depth of field is working. Everything looks smooth, nothing jaggy edges because of the anti-aliasing. So that's really great. And that will that will pay dividends when we go to actually um, watch the movie. You, you won't see those, those jaggy edges and it won't catch your eye in a bad way. Okay, so if I open it here, you can see you can see the slight movement going on if I scroll through all these. So that's the animation working. I think everything looks pretty smooth and nice. You know, it, you could refine this a lot. And you could add a lot of detail to your scene and mess around a lot more. I think the cabin needs some more detail. There, there, you could do a lot of things here, but the point is the animation's working. Okay, so that's how you generate an animation. I think that's pretty cool. In a minute, we'll look at what the finished results look like. So there you go. That's how you can generate a final scene after you've built out your whole environment and cabin. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I've got more coming up and I'll see you in the next video.